Hey. You say the word. Take a look. Stump around here. My back hurts, my feet hurt, everything hurts. Well, well, Mr. Valentine. I thought you had forgotten about the lonely. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Hey. What you got for me? Piper. Anything you need? Your thoughts? Have any more questions about the Institute's enemies, Blue? We should get going. All right. Here for Amari. She's downstairs. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. You're the one who can extract memories from a brain, 
right? Normally, we only allow our clients to experience their own memories. Now, what's this all about? We need a deep dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Nick's an older model since. Is he compatible? That's exactly what I was thinking. If we are lucky, it should hook right in. But even if this works, Mr. Valentine would be taking on a tremendous amount of risk. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. Let's do it. You really think this will work, Nick? No idea. But we got a missing kid on the line. That's worth the risk. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Is Nick gonna be okay? Yes, the connections appear to be stable. Hopefully it'll be as simple as unplugging the implant once we're done. But that doesn't get around the current problem. The memory encryption is too strong for a single mind. But... What if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Nick and I are gonna share a mind? Yeah, I'm not gonna see him in any compromising positions, am I? Yeah, if a smart mouth was all it took to solve problems, we would have found your son by now. Um, uh, no. You won't have to worry about that. The only memories you'll access are the ones in the implant. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there, and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Hey. Hmm? Hey, Piper. Hey, handsome. That's all for now. Okay. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. 
The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. This doesn't seem. I never to knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't there want to know. There appears to be another Not intact that. memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. It's gonna be... The thing about happiness is... You only know you had it... When it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but... Uh, you don't really believe it. Focus on the... Petty bullshit or... Next job or whatever. It's only looking back... By comparison with what comes after... That you really understand, that's what happiness felt like. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah, you gotta give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you'd want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Whatever made me 